Now sometimes it does pay to have a three camera setup. Why? Well it has to do with the typical shot progression. The first shot in the scene is a wide shot and we're talking about the establishing shot that shows all of the actors in the scene. Now this shot is not used all the way through the end. Your editor is just going to take the very beginning and then he's going to start using the medium shots and the close-ups. At least that's the plan. Now there are exceptions to this. Uh, let's say you have blocking in your scene where the actors are moving around but they're talking. Okay, if that's happening, then this wide shot does become very important, doesn't it? Now, the next shot is a medium shot of your actor or actors as they are engaged in dialogue. If there are actors in the scene who don't talk, they may not be in this medium shot. The editor will periodically have to use this shot in segments and intersperse them with the uh, close-ups to make the final, final cut. The next shot is going to be a medium shot of each individual actor as they're delivering their lines. Now, sometimes this shot is just skipped, and you go straight to the next shot. The final shot is a close-up of each actor delivering his lines, or their lines. In this setup, we're referring to your typical drama type of film. You know, comedies don't work this way, and we'll be discussing that in a little bit. Now, the third camera can take care of the medium shot. So, you know, while the main camera is focusing on the close-ups, the third camera can be right next to that main camera, but it can be shot wider. And so you're capturing the close-ups and the medium shots at the same time. If you didn't do it that way, then you're going to use your main camera to do the medium shots. Then you have to reposition the camera and the lighting to do all the close-ups. This way you can kill two birds with one stone. Now, I think that this is a good time to have that phone camera, a good phone camera, as your third camera. That's why I don't think this is going to be that difficult to get. You know, you've got the camera already, or at least one of your friends has his third camera in their back pocket. All right, so I'm assuming that both your main camera and the phone camera can be set to the same FPS, frames per second, and that both of them are probably shooting, what, full HD, right? If you've got those in sync, then I think this is going to work, and it's really going to save you some time. By the way, it doesn't have to be a phone camera. I'm just, you know, saying that uh, you don't have to go out and buy another camera. If, if some friend has another camera at their disposal, by all means, by all means, you can use that too. Okay, let's talk about the positioning of this third camera. Look at this diagram, the slide that I'm going to put up here, and we can see how to place these cameras. Now you've got the main camera, and then right uh, to the right of the main camera is this third camera. And I, I've tried to approximate a phone camera being used. Now they have to be at the same uh, angle of attack towards your focal point or, or towards your actor. You cannot take the phone and put it at a different angle. You see that uh, I've got a red circle, the do not do circle, on a phone camera that's faced kind of like counter angle to the main camera. That's not gonna work. The lighting is all wrong and that's not gonna look good. Why do I even need close-ups? What's wrong with just showing the entire scene in medium or even wide mode? Well, that's a good question. And you know, it is possible and that would certainly save a tremendous amount of time. You know, actually, comedies function that way. They don't use that many close-ups, especially when they're doing gags and jokes, because those have to be done in medium shot or wide shot with the other actors included. Why? Because you need to have the reaction from the other actors to cue the audience that something just happened. You know, a joke, a punchline, a gag just got pulled. And it's the reaction of the other people in the scene that tells us, oh, you know, something funny happened. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, physical comedy or slapstick, that also requires space. So, you know, it's really hard to do that in close-up. Now, we just said that in drama, a medium or wide shot from beginning to end is usually considered boring. I said usually. The late, great filmmaker Akira Kurosawa, you know, he knew how to make a large scene full of actors work 
with dialogue, no close-ups needed. The entire dialogue for the scene done in a wide shot. Okay. And the reason why he could do that, and the reason why those scenes were not just successful, but were considered great, was because Akira Kurosawa knew the traditional stage blocking, and he applied that to his movie set. Now, think about that. Think about that. You go to a theater play, they can't do close-ups for you, right? They've got, you know, actors on stage and a big scene, and they have to manage it very carefully, as well as do things to keep your attention throughout the scene and throughout the play, really. But of course, you know, not everyone can appreciate a play, right? So one of the big reasons for close-ups on TV and films is to change the look to maintain viewer interest. For viewers that have a short attention span, which is essentially everybody under the age of 50, if nothing changes visually within five seconds, their eyes just kind of glaze over. And that's why a combination of medium and close-ups work. That third camera could be a real asset when you're doing those medium shots. Okay, folks, that's it for uh, today. Pretty quick, wasn't it? Now, in the next episode, we're going to tackle the real film breaker, and that is sound. And I'm going to tell you this right up front. If you really want great sound in your film, hire a professional. I mean, they have the equipment and the know-how to make a difference. But if you're making a no-budget film, I can guarantee you, you don't have the money for that. What we're going to do is we're going to research and discuss the workarounds and techniques to garner acceptable sound. Not great, maybe not even good, but we'll talk about why sound is so tough. Okay, that's coming up on the next episode. We'll see you then. Aloha.